So are you thinking of starting a nonprofit, but you don't know what the articles of incorporation are? We're gonna talk about it today. Let's get into it. Hey y'all, this is Tiffany with Boss in the Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. If you need help, subscribe to this channel because I drop videos every week. So today the topic is on the articles of incorporation and I'm gonna break that down for those who are not quite sure what they are and what they mean and what that has to do with you creating a nonprofit. So I have another video that I talk about the steps to creating a nonprofit, but sometimes we take for granted what people do and don't know. So I don't wanna assume that every term that I use in my other videos, you're clearly aware of or you know what I mean by that. So I wanna do some foundational videos just to make sure you understand clearly from beginning to end, what everything means. So today we're gonna to talk about the Articles of Incorporation and stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna share some very, very important information that a lot of people don't tell you or they don't know to tell you about what has to be in the Articles of Incorporation if you don't wanna run into any issues with the IRS when you want 501c3 status. So make sure you wait to the end because I'm gonna share that tip for you. So what are your articles of incorporation? So first of all, let's clear up some confusion about articles and is it one document, is it multiple documents, all of that. So your articles, I like to think of them as paragraphs in a document. And there are different components of one document that basically declare that you're organizing yourself as a business and this is what your business intends to do. So there are articles that make up one document that's called the Articles of Incorporation. So I hope that makes sense. The language is different from state to state. So in some states, it may not be called the Articles of Incorporation. It may be called um, a corporate charter or something like that, but they're essentially the same thing. They're establishing your organization as an official business in the state where you're gonna do business. Here's one thing you have to understand about starting a nonprofit and any business, really. Every state is different, so that means every state has different terminology, every state has different forms, different form numbers, and different filing fees. So what you would do in Kentucky may be completely different in terms of what you would do in Connecticut. So you have to keep that in mind. So you have to first understand what state you're incorporating in, and then do your research for that state to make sure that you have all the doc documentation and the things you need to put in place for your articles in order to establish your nonprofit. If you're looking to file your articles of incorporation, you need to check more than likely with the Secretary of State's office. And generally in every state, you would start with the Secretary of State's office and they would have information and instruction for how you need to set up your nonprofit. So again, that's why it's so important for you to do your research and not make assumptions off because this person did it this way or this person set it up this way. You need to know for yourself based on the state that you're incorporating in, what the actual process is. Now, here's the thing. States all operate differently. So sometimes the articles of incorporation is you filling out a form that they have. You just answer the questions and once you submit it, they'll put their stamp of approval and you have your certificate of incorporation or your certificate of formation. In some states, they'll ask you to submit a separate document where you have to kind of do like a Word document, you have to create the articles, submit the articles, and then they'll approve that and you are officially formed. In other states, they may have a template for you. So you fill in that actual template based on your individual information for your organization and you submit that. So again, it's completely different when you move from state to state. So just make sure what you're getting yourself into and make sure you know what to put in the articles of incorporation, which leads to my next point. What goes in the articles? Like what should you be putting in there? What is typically listed in your articles of incorporation? So first things first, just know that it does not have to be overly complicated. When I set up my first business, I thought I had to do like a dissertation and explain in a lot of detail about what I wanted to do, but don't overcomplicate it. Just, it's very simple. It does not have to be a lot. So typically what you'll see in the articles is your name, your location, 
um, a statement of what your purposes are as an organization. You may see a line for a resident agent, and a resident agent is a person who's established who can receive business correspondence in your state on behalf of your organization. So you sometimes in the state, you have to declare who that person is. And sometimes it could just be the founder of the organization. It could be the same person. But again, that's why you need to do your research. And then you would have the name of the incorporators. So all the people who are with you, who are establishing the organization, if your board is already formed, you would have the names of the board members of the initial board. Or if it's just you as a founder, you can just put yourself, okay? Just keep in mind that, again, every state has requirements for the required minimum of board members, which may impact who has to go on that form. So if your state requires at least three people to be on your board, they may require that you have three names on, you know, listed in the Articles of Incorporation. So just keep that in mind as well, which is why I keep coming back to the same point. Do your research. Always start with the Secretary of State's office. As I said earlier, once your articles are approved, then typically it's called a certificate of formation or a certificate of incorporation that the state will issue to you. So you need to save that document. You need to save the document that you submitted and you need to save the stamp of approval or the approval letter given to you from the state. And again, this may look different depending on the state that you're dealing with. Never throw that document away and make sure you have a digital copy because you'll find as you go for all kinds of things, for, for grants and other opportunities, you're going to be asked about your articles of incorporation a lot. So make sure you, you save a copy of that. I tell people to have a physical binder and a digital binder because I'm kind of old school and I like paper. If you need a template for an actual like corporate binder to keep important information about your nonprofit, check out my nonprofit startup mini kit, which includes a template for your corporate binder and suggested tabs for your binder. And it also includes information about your first board meeting agenda and all that. So check that out in the description box below. So I promise to share at the end of this video a very, very important tip so that you won't have issues with the IRS when you're applying for 501c3 tax exempt status. If you need help understanding what it means to be a 501c3 organization, make sure you check out my video on that topic so you can have a better understanding. But this is some, something that a lot of states may not tell you, and that's the trick. They don't tell you that you have to have certain language in your articles of incorporation if you're going to go for 501c3 status. Some states are good. They'll, you know, remind you of that. They'll say, make sure you have this language in there if you're doing it. And some states are like, you're on your own. You need to figure it out yourself. So that's why I'm telling you now. There are certain passages, certain language that the IRS expects to see if you're going to apply for 501c3 status. Um, they're particularly around making sure that no private persons will benefit unfairly from the organization, information about um, what happens when the organization dissolves, where the assets go, information that you're organized for charitable purposes, research or educational purposes. It's a whole like suggested language. What I'm gonna do is link directly to the IRS website so you can see the language that I'm talking about those paragraphs need to be in your Articles of Incorporation. You want to know why? When you apply for tax exempt status, so if you're using the Streamline form, for example, so that's the 1023 EZ, the form is going to ask you, are those passages entered into your Articles of Incorporation? Are they there? And you don't want to lie to the IRS. You want to make sure they're there. They're not going to ask you for your articles off the bat. So you have to affirm that they're in there. So you want to make sure that you have that in there and it's filed with the state. If you're applying using the long form, then you're just going to have to submit your articles anyway. So you just don't want any problems or complications or delays with the IRS because if they catch that, they're going to come back to you and say, it's not good enough, you're going to have to redo your articles and amend your articles and go through a whole long process. So to avoid all of that, make sure you have the language listed in your articles of incorporation. And again, the language is listed below in the link that I provided to the IRS.
So was that helpful? I hope so. If you have any questions, you can always visit me at www.bossonabudget.com and I'm going to see you in the next video.